Hello guys, this is uh, Dr. Palne Pramanikam. So we've been talking about time-restricted feeding in this channel for a long time. But the biggest problem is people working in night shift. So uh, it's absolutely important we focus on this group of patients because not only they are compromising their sleep, they're also compromising their food intake, lifestyle habits, big time. So um, I have been pushing for a minimum of 12 hours of fasting and uh, when they finish their work between like 6 p.m. to 4 a.m., especially when they're working on U.S. based timings, it becomes a problem. So um, in this uh, episode, I'm going to bring uh, our uh, dietitian Varsha again um, and then talk to her regarding what are the possible options that we can take during uh, night for night shift workers to keep them full at the same time to have a balanced diet and make sure that we still maintain this fasting of at least um, uh, 12 hours. So without any ado, let's uh, bring her on board. Hi, Varsha. Hi, Hi, how are you? Oh, good, good, good. Welcome back. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, sir. Nice to be here again. This channel's formal dietitian, my writing it. I hope right. your sub subscribers also like me. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. They actually asked me to bring you back because, um, you know, the tips that you gave in the previous video was wonderful, uh, including me. Um, so in this video, we're going to focus on this uh, night shift uh, work, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, we talked about sunrise to sunset and circadian rhythm. So again, I'm re-emphasizing for my audience is that uh, growth hormone is secreted after 7 p.m. once the sunset is done. And uh, once the sun rises, um, the insulin activity starts rising and then dies down once the sun goes down. So once the insulin goes down, the growth hormone comes up. And if we disturb the cycle, Rumba damage I don't <laughs> body. And uh, but unfortunately for night shift workers, the first thing that I tell my patients is is there any possibility that you can go to a different work? That's what I say. I think that is something anyone in the health industry would always advise the uh, you know night shift workers to do. Right. Um, is there any possibility where you can quit your job? <laughs> but um, unfortunately, they can't. And I don't think it's a practical advice yes. for us also to like you know tell them quit your job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. So what we basically do is we try to like reverse the kind of recommendations that we give for someone who's on a night shift. Mm. So when when someone is in a night shift, we automatically know that their probability of getting a lifestyle disease is much more oh, yeah. than someone, you know, um, who has a very, um, you know, nine to five job, right? Okay. So okay. their predisposition is a lot more when compared to someone who has a normal job. So we need to think proactive. We need mm. to catch up before they even get any sort of, you know, lifestyle conditions. Right. So when it comes to men, the kind of medical condition that we most commonly see is, of course, yes, obesity being a lying issue. The second one that we see is, you know, a reduction in the testosterone levels. Right. Now, when it's going to be a female, 100%, we see a lot of cases where there is a disruption in the menstrual flow. Mm. So they have much more chances of developing PCOS. Or... Absolutely. Absolutely. So, you know, that's why any kind of hormonal disruption is going to cause hormonal changes in both men and women. Right. Um, so what I usually tell uh, patients is that um, if you are on a night shift, it's like a playing an IPL game with two wickets down to start with. Correct. Absolutely. Ah. Say that. So you are... It is like that. Ah. Yes. So you are at a disadvantage. Yeah. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. So... Uh, but but you, are, you, you mentioned a very good point that, you know, people who are in night shift are more inclined to do some health lifestyle change compared to people who are in day shift. Is that what you're saying in your practice as well? 100% sir. So yeah. we know that they are much more prone to any sort of lifestyle condition because you're, so there is two kinds of clocks, right? Like there is one internal clock, which is what we call as biological clock. And the second one is the environmental clock. That mm -hmm. That is something that we all have said that this is the time, you know, this is 12 p.m., this is 12 a.m. And the internal clock is the sleep and wake up cycle. Now, when that gets disrupted, 100% your chance of, you know, getting any sort of lifestyle condition is much more than a common man. So this is the kind of, you know, um, knowledge that we, tend to put it across to someone who has a night shift. Um, and given the fact that, you know, they, they work throughout the night, 
mm-hmm. then you know there is a disruption in hunger as well right you're mm-hmm. either bored you're either feeling super restless because mm-hmm. you're the only person in the house who's going to work mm-hmm. so you don't have anyone to talk to at that point of time so you don't know what to do some most of the times you reach out to food right. as a source yes. of comfort mm. <laughs> right right most of the time you know it, it is it's either you're bored or you you know that you have that snack in the fridge you know that you have bought that snack and kept it inside the kitchen so you know that okay i can just take one for today mm. what is going to mm. happen right <laughs> so that one will become 10 and then you know it just keeps going on and on so i think this is what has been happening and in terms of night shift workers what we need to emphasize more is behavior modification you know over diet change mm. by just not saying you know eat this eat that but it'll only work much more when we change their behavior right mm. so so but 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 it's it's easy to say but difficult to implement right because even i'm on night shift and i am on call most of the time i spend in doctor's lounge looking for snacks rather than seeing patients right because right. We, are, we so to our uh, uh, argument is that, you know we are already stressed out we come in the middle of the night and we are already in a different phase zone it's okay it's okay to indulge uh, but small small insults will lead to a bigger outcome eventually um so so um so for our, for our, let's say for a patient who lives in india and who mm. uh works on a us based timing let's take a most common timing of like 6 pm to 4 am right right it's been right. right. so if i am the patient that comes to you and then say that you know what i'm I, i want to be healthy and i don't want to get diabetes um so the meal timing what, what i say to my patient is that you know what try to stick to the same timing every day that's one number one and number two is try to maintain that fast off like 12 to 14 hours as much as possible if you mm-hmm. plan accordingly it is easier to maintain that fast more um so that you don't uh, you don't uh, uh, feel hungry during the early morning hours um so what i tell my patient is to you know have dinner around like you know 10 to 11 pm maximum mm-hmm. um and then if you can go without eating anything in the morning and then go all the way up to like 1 am or 2 at 1 pm or 2 pm when you wake up that is the best case scenario that is the best case scenario so okay. patients coming to you um in this model um, how do you approach the uh, balanced diet approach for a dinner between like 10 to 11 what do you say right so firstly when they come to us um the first thing that i do is i always ask them to stick to a r- routine like you just said yes. mm-hmm. um i first fix the sleep um second will be the diet mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. we see that a lot of them do not get deep sleep mm-hmm. they're very very light sleepers mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. the first thing that we do is we try to fix their sleep now what happens there is that um, we tell them that you know you make sure that your room is as dark as possible yes because you're on a ulta basically right. when everybody is you know sleeping you're waking up and when everybody's waking up you're going to bed so yes. make sure that you do not have any sort of noise like you know outside noise that can disrupt your sleep so i ask, make i sure- ask them to watch uh, maniratnam movie <laughs> <laughs> and also i i ask them to wear the sleep mask and right, do yeah. mask black uh, blue, yeah. black curtains right you can wear a blue light blocker like 90 minutes before you go to bed mm. um and second thing that we do is we ask them to keep the room as dark as possible mm-hmm. um that you can't even see another person you know right. try to keep it as dark as possible so that you'll have a very sound sleep third is that if you are a person who is very very anxious mm-hmm. or you're super stressed at work and you constantly you're wired and you always think about work what will help is probably having a chamomile tea or a valerian root tea before bedtime like mm-hmm. sipping on it because I, it really doesn't have calories and if you're doing intermittent fasting it's great because it will help to calm you and you can just go to bed and it can increase your deep sleep now that is what research also says and you know it's not I very mean, expensive is, uh, preferably without sugar yeah yeah all of this is like without sugar, without sugar. just in hot water yeah chamomile tea when they how does it come it comes in bags huh? tea bags tea bags tea or bags. it comes as a tea powder also sir but i think nowadays people prefer tea bags over tea powders bags. Okay. so, so just one cup of hot water and then you 
put this uh, chamomile tea or valerie root tea yeah okay. yeah just okay. one bag sip through it and then you know just like you know in say 30 minutes or 45 minutes you will make sure that you know you feel calm and you can just go to bed so now I, that okay, is let me bring this point but sorry to interrupt i'm saying there's the, the, the sleep when you sleep more you burn more calories right so i did a recent video on it like sleeping is more important than diet and gym but unfortunately that point is not getting across yeah. not getting across yeah. um if you look at my uh, reception of my videos right the sleep video is the lowest one <laughs> so i i always tell people so i always tell people that the best fat burner is very cheap it's not yes. expensive yes. you have yes. it with you which is sleep yes that's absolutely. your best fat burner one other point is you know like kumbhakarna right kumbhakarna he always slept but he was obese you know why if he would not have eaten that meal he would have been the thinnest person ever <laughs> <laughs> so, right. so sleep actually uh, you know the scientifically speaking so you know the more the melatonin the metabolic rate increases and um, the whenever metabolic rate increases fat burns so it is an alternative form of uh, building muscle actually um, so i think there is something that we have you know failed to understand as a generation because we feel that yes, yes, the less we absolutely. sleep and the more we work, we work you know that is more productive we yeah, are mm. that, that's that's when they regard you as a successful person which correct, is not correct. absolutely um, and amma my mom will say right you know nada inno thoongikittu irukka endichi padran so uh, but i think if i would have slept a little bit more i would have been even more uh, productive more smart so i think that point has to be emphasized has to be emphasized, especially for night shift workers you know as varsha said sleep is extremely important uh, we cannot emphasize more because you are starting at a disadvantage so please please uh, please look at my previous video on how to sleep well um, and uh, include all these especially those those mask and uh, also the dark black screens we cannot emphasize it more chamomile tea and uh, valerie root tea as um, uh, varsha suggested and then there's two more things that they yes, can please, do please. one mm-hmm. is um uh, if they if they very very anxious like i just said again mm-hmm. they can have a magnesium glycinate or uh, you know magnesium supplement which will help them mm-hmm. if a forms of magnesium is also very very important mm-hmm. citrate so and glycinate magnesium comes in tablets powders ah, capsules so it capsules. comes in capsule form capsules way better so they can either go for a magnesium glycinate or a magnesium citrate so because these two help with anxiety it also helps with deep sleep only these two forms of magnesium um that they can have just right before their bedtime right so i'm one uh, just a word of uh, caution for people um uh, both you and both me and varsha we don't promote supplements right away um so you know try this natural stuff first you know you have to let your body work by itself but sometimes in few situations you will need some help Uh, and it is okay to take these magnesium supplements um, if you have like kidney disease or any other issues uh, you have to be a little bit more careful uh, but in general overall uh, it is okay and magnesium has been shown to promote sleep as well so what you um, magnesium citrate so let's say that they decided to buy the capsule is there a dosage or anything much for you what would yeah, you recommend so um, i would suggest somewhere between 200 mg to 400 mg per day mm-hmm. if enna aguna when they are super deficient in magnesium they'll actually find it to be ex- extremely drowsy the minute they have it right mm. it means that you you are deficient in magnesium so mm. it's also one way to figure out that you are deficient yes. and yes. it will also help so oh, another another way is let's say that you let's say that you need magnesium supplement or not it's based on how is your diet intake is before correct you, you can evaluate your daily uh, meal intake and then see whether you have any kinds of vegetables in your <laughs> in your meal yeah. so let's say no, that you are off like so magnesium is so less than vegetables sir it is more of um, you know pulses nuts and seeds basically right, right. Seeds so, so what i was trying to say was um, let's say you have like a bad if you many for many people who are a night shift workers like prefer fast food rather than like full whole cooked mm-hmm. meals because of their mm-hmm. convenience so whenever the food is processed like right? whenever there is a boxed food whenever there is something that is added to the food 
that definitely depletes the natural mineral resources that is available. So uh, if you are not eating any grains, not eating any vegetables, your magnesium is going to be low and that will reflect on the sleep. So that is another alternative option to look into it as well. So when you do, how do they, how do people get it? Just it's available in, uh, in. Yeah, Amazon. it's available on Amazon, Amazon. and, and Amama. Um, and I think in US, it's more of over the counter yes, kind of prescription, if I'm not wrong. Before so, supplements come to India, US, uh, they will maximize. Amma, out of it. <laughs> so we always make sure that we see the right kind of, you know, um, brand to, to right. buy from. So Anala, mm -hmm. that shouldn't be a problem. Uh, just need to figure out the form of magnesium that they are getting it from. For example, if they're going to get a magnesium oxide lendana, you will not see that much of an impact because magnesium oxide is the poorest, you know, form of magnesium. So that's why a citrate or a glycinate will help. In terms talking of about the ingredient, magnesium, like, there are different kinds the form, of... The form of magnesium. Form of magnesium, yeah. Um, yeah. Magnesium, it comes from different types. So just for my audience to know that magnesium sulfate is there, magnesium citrate is there, magnesium acetate is there, magnesium oxide is there. So in general, magnesium citrate is one that we... Uh, that that we recommend again um, try the natural sources first if that doesn't work it is okay to take supplements like 200 milligrams per day if needed okay what else you have what is again uh, melatonin is a hormone mm. Anna, there are so many people who take melatonin supplement mm. for night shift workers there's a lot of research on that mm. um, but again if they have tried all of these you know, uh, recommendations, it mm. hasn't worked, then go for a melatonin. Mm. Again, it needs a doctor's prescription yes, and, a doctor, um, and a doctor has to tell you how much dosage that they need to start off with. I would suggest somewhere as low as possible, start off with melatonin. If not, give it a skip because it's your natural hormone. It's just that the lower dosage will actually kick in much more than a very big dosage. Um, that's the kind of you know, that's the kind of research I've looked into and observations that we have seen also with with the with you know some clients of mine. I'll, so I'll tell you, you know, in US at least that hmm. melatonin replaces their dinner. <laughs> What? everybody takes melatonin like crazy okay. melatonin mm -hmm. is like available in different forms different varieties number <laughs> viral it's it's so much uh, but what the problem is you know after taking melatonin they are dancing like arabic kutu in the middle of the night <laughs> So, so, no, see, but it has a lot of side effects also yes, like yes, you get sir. super dizzy right yes more than side effects as what you said it's a natural hormone Correct. So there are uh, inserts that we're doing to our body that we are suppressing the melatonin by, you know, like exposing ourselves to light after sunset, watching TV, phone, one hour before going to bed. All these are true. But let's say that you um, uh, you avoid all those, your, your body will naturally produce this. And the problem with the melatonin supplements is that your sleep problem might get worse initially. Mm. It get worse. I've seen so many people that, you know what, I was sleeping for like five hours. Now I'm sleeping only for four hours after taking melatonin supplement. Right, so right. melatonin is overhyped, overhyped. Right. As you correctly said, you don't have to necessarily uh, take it. But uh, for night shift workers, it might play a role. So again, talk to your doctor. Don't take it by yourself. Uh, as you said, you know, we usually start with one milligrams and increase to two milligrams if needed. Um, so if you try all these um, measures that we discussed, so I think sleep can be better right don't you agree sleep yeah. can be better yeah. in night workers yeah and and after sleep and one of the most don'ts is that do not do any sort of physical activity right before your bedtime mm -hmm. um i've seen a lot of clients coming and telling me uh i you know i went for a walk right bedtime, after my no, for them bedtime is around like 4 a.m 5 a.m ama so mm -hmm. I've, I've seen a lot of them telling me that you know um, what what am I going to do uh, for that one hour where I'm not going to get sleep? So I might as well, you know, get some um, kind of a workout in. Um, and now go, you kick in your, you know, your uh, good hormones, your happy right. hormones, like your endorphins, everything you kick in. And then you won't feel like sleeping at all. And then you'll be wide awake. Right, right. So right. that's the worst time to work out. So the best mm. time to work out is like an hour after you wake up. 
Right. Or mm. you know, during that uh, say, or a three p.m. to five p.m. If you're free, your shift doesn't start at that time. Then you know, do your workout. Right. It's right. a very bad time to start a workout just right before you go to bed. Even so, even for regular regular shift workers, right? Regular shift workers. The research says that the um, the workout, you know, any kind of physical activity is best around three p.m. Mm. 3 pm 4 pm the reason is all your hormones are aligned in such a way that the mobility is expected to be high in the afternoon and right. uh, we did a study where the risk of injuries during workout is much much lower in the afternoon period if compared to the morning period so so there are multiple advantages to it as well um so yeah so Workout no in the morning. So try to if you are working out. I'm actually glad that your clients are actually working out. <laughs> your patients are working. Out. Super. So sleep and uh, workout. So see, remember we didn't focus on diet that much because for night shift workers, these two are the most important things. Come more. And than the third you. and the third point is caffeine intake. So, yeah, so coffee big time. Yeah, caffeine time. intake. One the you're not supposed to drink. So, so for example, if your shift, like you said, your shift starts from six p.m. to four a.m. Okay, mm -hmm. and your shift gets over at four a.m., mm -hmm. you're supposed to finish off your caffeine at least by eleven thirty to twelve max. Absolutely. Because mm -hmm. the half life of coffee or the or caffeine, for example, is for five hours. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. And you know it'll kick in. You'll be at its peak at between thirty to sixty minutes of you know coffee intake. So it's better that you know they drink their coffee either you know between eleven thirty to twelve and finish it off. That should be the last cup. Yes, eleven thirty p.m. Right, right, right. So, so uh, yeah. So half life is like five to six hours. And you know even for regular workers, we say that don't no coffee after like three p.m. Three or four p.m. Mm. Because you know, mm. if you want to follow this hormonal, uh, but it's very difficult to do because we're so addicted to coffee. Um, but yeah, but for night shift workers, it's very like it's very important for them to finish it at least before twelve a.m. So because that's when it will also help them to sleep. Ilati, a lot of people, you know, they they tend to have anxiety or uh, you know um, increase in the heartbeat, mm -hmm. and they'll always tell me that you know I I don't I'm not falling asleep then we ask them why you're not falling asleep then they tell me that after the shift gets over i'll have one cup of coffee oh, right 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 so oh. how can you fall asleep when you're going to have like one cup of coffee correct. after your you know your shift gets correct, over correct. So i think right. these few points so make me, a huge difference so tell me some alternative options for example for me right so you know mm. i i just drink coffee because it feels like i'm doing something uh, as a for a go to snack kind of thing for me for it's a go to coffee so during the daytime, black coffee or with some cream, it's okay. But it's a big, big no-no for nighttime workers, right? So what are the alternative options that they could uh, binge on? Or uh, let's say like infused water or something. What, what do you recommend? Infused water uh, is okay. And I also in, kind of feel that even with coffee, I think cold brew coffee is a much better mm. alternative when compared to like, you know, coffee with milk or, you know, which mm. is hot black coffee that is one thing that they could do um and third is that probably if they want to you know see an increase in their thirst as yes. well as you know help them uh, feel full uh, i think one technique that really helps is you can have a glass of water with just one teaspoon of chia seeds i think that yes, will Ah, mm. just one mm. teaspoon. Are the kind of chia seeds help me lose weight? I've been so little, or one tablespoon, two tablespoon, lam podwanga. It's actually high in calories also. Absolutely, big time, big time. Yeah, one so, tablespoon, I think it's fifty, sixty calories easily. Yeah. Mm. So one teaspoon in in like say you know half a liter water or one liter of water. Mm. I think that will definitely help. Super. Uh, mm. during summer or buttermilk. Buttermilk is like a good yes, option. Yes, absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. So Super. that is also something that they can have during Super. summer time. It really helps. Um, or what they can do is um, as a good snack where you're also trying to lose weight. Uh, you also want to eat something healthy. Uh, you get these options called as nice cream where fruit on the blend funny, you know, they, you freeze it. It'll become mm. like an ice cream. Mm. So in the cream, and, uh, what, what nice cream? cream in Solvanga. It's a term. Nice cream. Yeah, it's called nice cream. <laughs> so nice. it's just to like, you know, trick your mind that you're eating something sweet, oh, but nice. it is a fruit. Ah, yeah. Nice so you cream. can blend the fruit 
um and you can probably if you want you can add coconut milk or normal milk or whatever mm. and freeze it just two ingredients freeze it then you scoop it out it become like an ice cream so so, so one scoop ice cream and one scoop ice cream ah huh? illa illa rendu men ice cream <laughs> No ice cream. <laughs> Red wine no ice cream. <laughs> oh, that's good. That's that's good. That's a, that's yeah. a wonderful. It's a good uh, idea. So uh, when you're when you're feeling like you know very bored during the night and you feel like you want to eat something sweet, then probably you can just make this at home. You know, keep it inside your uh, freezer and take it and have also. Mm, okay. So, so, but what we are saying that uh, do everything before twelve, maximum midnight or maximum eleven exactly. p.m. Exactly. Not anything after. any food intake after 12 pm you are reversing all the good effects that you have done so far 12 so, am 12 am sir so 12 am yeah anything um, after midnight like 12 am um uh, in the so this interview itself we confuse all the timing <laughs> 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 for you evening for me it's morning um so 12 am after and until so the the concept is you eat full before you before midnight and then you don't feel anything hungry until uh, you go to sleep around like 5 am and then you have a good night sleep good morning sleep for you guys good morning sleep and then 2 pm would be your perfect time to eat like you know a balanced diet protein rich and everything so for 2 pm when i wake up what what do you suggest uh, vasha i think you can directly do a brunch don't do like a breakfast yes. mm -hmm. so probably we can give an idea where um, i will ask my client to directly do a big lunch okay. like you can have your rice you can have your vegetables yes. your protein options and yes. one buttermilk because it's super hot here if if it's someone who is doing the night shift in india it's it's crazy hot so they can mm. probably do this as a lunch mm. and they can have two kinds of snacks if for lunch after it kaprama Two o'clock, you're having a lunch now, or a four thirty. If you're going to like, you know, have your workout, you're going to like get in your workout. Mm -hmm. After that, if they want, they can choose to have a whey shake. After that, mm -hmm. to get in some amount of protein. Whey protein or, shake. Yeah, whey mm -hmm. protein shake, or they can just have any kind of a snack. Like a popcorn is a great snack. Popcorn can also be like a good snack in the night. Um, but, but don't no, have no butter. Popcorn. No, no butter. That's what I, I was coming there. Okay. No sodium popcorn because no sodium, you know, started uh, sending the popcorn on Swiggy and Zomato. So no, you know, sodium popcorn. But you get these popcorns in, yeah, in yeah, a yeah. local shop, like for ten rupees. But you know, I will not get that because that's not as tasty. Ah, <laughs> I'm just, yeah, yeah, I understand. <laughs> so, but but that's a good. So so two p.m. is a good meal. So p two pm so long last two pm and the you make sure that there is protein there. Yeah? We need to make sure there is some kind of protein. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Yen na ako na when they tend to miss protein, romba pasi ka arme ko because you finish the big exactly. Yeah, you you finish your fast, okay, and then you're looking forward to a great meal. Yes. So I'm saying that probably you can include you know the kind of portion you including for your breakfast also. You can club it. two meals can be clubbed into one meal mm. and you can have that as a large meal mm -hmm. so you're saying you that even, it's okay to have biryani but make sure there is a chicken piece in it 100% but <laughs> so you can have home cooked biryani okay. and not something from a yeah, restaurant yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. because restaurants la vandu bayangrama there's a lot of ghee and you know yeah, yeah, yeah. dal dal everything that they add so even if you're having a home cooked biryani it's completely fine but you measure how much you are supposed to eat mm. and include the pieces along with it right right protein protein is big time so 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 yeah. we talked about the 2 pm thing and then you we are saying like 4 pm 6 pm you could have like 2 to 3 snacks 4 pm 6 pm 8 pm maybe correct so they can also do like a pre workout or mm. pre workout madri they can eat something mm. and then you finish your workout then after your post workout can be a, another snack so it can be like two small meals that is going inside uh -huh, uh -huh. so after that if you're not feeling hungry for some time it's fine you can have like a liquid like a buttermilk or you know uh, sugar cane juice which is great adum mm. saapla uh, because sugar cane juice actually reduces bloating mm. any sort of you know gas issues ena night shift full la work panirpaanga and then after that if they didn't have any sort of you know 
meal some people tend to feel little bloated yeah, it's that's the one thing that we really miss here in us there is no way that is going to be reproduced yeah <laughs> right yeah so Sad. so to so 4 6 and 8 pm so these are the possible options right and then big time the most big important big, part yeah. of your meal is you are about to say something yeah the big the big meal is going to be the one that you're going to eat like before your fasting which is between 11 to 12 maximum yes. 11 kula mudika try pano yes. yes around so, 11 pm not yeah. the big meal i would say the most important meal because that's right. where the key thing is that you will not you shouldn't feel hungry until you go to sleep at 6 am 5 am right right so tips and tricks for that so what i would suggest is if they follow the same kind of pattern that we have given them say uh you know you have a big meal when you wake up so upper way you won't feel cranky you won't uh, feel like you know Mm. your mood will become much better and mm. then when you um, you know strategically you keep your another meal before a workout so your your workout will also become much better you will do your workout without feeling you know hungry and desperately looking at what to eat next mm. then comes your uh, post workout which will also make you feel full so that you can plan for the next meal and you won't you know make a hasty decision right. mm. while you're feeling hungry your you know your whole point of ordering food from outside while you're you know working throughout the night will reduce automatically that happens when that happens they order through swiggy swiggy and zomato 100% um. so again in the night shift workers you know there are like you know places which is open 24/7 exactly. mm. or they're open throughout the night mm. uh, but the kind of meals that they sell is also like biryani parotta mm. uh, fried chicken mm. in the marina they sell So and, what and, and they already stressed out during work, and it is Correct. very difficult to exercise your willpower when you are already stressed out. So you need to pre-plan. That is the key. Right, right. Mm-hmm. Um, so it takes only like you know, um, I think half a day of an entire week for you to plan for the next coming week. Yes. <laughs> you know, and and let me tell you this: I've shown like a great success rate when it comes to night shift workers mm. because we are we are you know changing the mindset, we are changing the timing and the strategy mm. and the portion sizes, which mm. works and which shows a huge amount of you know result in terms mm. of how much they've lost, like especially fat loss. Like fat mm. loss is super great in night shift workers, provided the kind of plan that you give them is. strategically possible right. and it is a smart plan that you yeah. give them right. i've had a, a night shift worker very recently who lost about 15 kilos in 2 months wow mm. so edume perisala edu fancy diet and the marla illa we just mm. changed the way he was eating mm. again fix the sleep the first thing that we do is to fix the sleep the then sleep. we mm. talk about diet mm. because mm. once sleep is fixed i think automatically the other things will come under place so correct 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 correct, correct. absolutely and also if you look at it so let's say your your meal is around like 11 pm the next meal is going to be only like 2 am so even regular shift workers will not get that advantage of 15 hours of fasting so you could you could you could make use of it you could make use of it so it's not that bad uh, you can make use of it as well um so uh, for for a night meal um so uh, you would say like how about the carb intake you know you would say low carb medium size carb what do you think so i will not go with the low carb um, mm. especially for a night shift worker you know mm. you'll become super cranky oh, yes okay good because mm. you're not like you know eating during the 15 hours window you're trying to do an if right. at the mm. same time you need to concentrate in your work so a mm. low carb is not advisable mm-hmm. probably a moderate portion of carbs is advisable for them Mm-hmm. um when you know what we can do is if a snack and carbs when on a night la the you know i would like to shift it for the night portion abhi na great mm-hmm. what they can do is uh, if they like the rotis then probably we can do like a stuff roti for them mm-hmm. with lots of vegetables i'm not talking about aloo paratha but i'm speaking of you know other uh, vegetables yeah, that roti, can yeah. tell um, me more about it it looks it's 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 it sounds very interesting <laughs> ah, i mean all of all of paratha theory what, what do you stuff inside capsicum and uh, you know some amount of carrot or beetroot or whatever it is so on the fl- flower chapati ma podra pe you i include everything ama mm. ama illa what they can do is uh, for them to give a feeling of having a pizza na you can have all the you know the vegetable toppings that you do 
ஃபார் அ பீட்ஸா அது வந்து இந்த ரோட்டில வந்து ஒரு பேசா லைக் யூ نو மரினாரா சாஸ் ஓகே ஆர் தக்காளி சட்னி பேசிக்கலி தக்காளி சட்னி வந்து ரோட்டில போட்டு அதுக்கு அப்புறம் a lot of vegetables that uh, you can saute it and you can put it like a franky you can also add your protein options which can mm. be chicken or um, uh, paneer or tofu okay. or sprouts or whatever okay. and you know that can be very filling adu and you can make it like a dinner option mm. or you can also have a big bowl of soup where you get your vegetables and you can do like a grilled option like a grilled mm. chicken or a grilled paneer mm-hmm. one key factor that i want to differentiate between regular shift worker and night shift worker is for regular shift workers in my method of circadian rhythm that we talk about we recommend low carb options for dinner uh, the reason being is that um, your sleep will be slightly compromised if there is a food is rich in carb and it has been shown as well um the for the night shift workers it's the other way around so right so you need to be active throughout the night until like 4 5 am and it is absolutely important that you don't get hungry uh, the reason is if you get hungry and you just don't have the will power to make good choices so either you pre plan or you have a good meal and uh, you create your mindset that yes 11 pm 12 pm 12 am will be the time that's it and then uh, shama mail tea valeri roti before you go to bed have a good night sleep 2 am have your heaviest meal oh the other advantage of that 2 pm i'm sorry 2 pm heaviest meal is that your insulin is at its peak yeah yeah it's peak it's absolutely okay to take whatever you want at that time i mean in reasonable quantities um i also tell all my patients you know like it's okay to have biryani it's okay to have whatever you want but just don't have it in dinner time you switch it to the uh, afternoon time at least to create that lifestyle change to start with so that is an advantage that they have to start with um yeah. and then and then as washa said 4 pm 6 pm 8 pm snack and 10 pm um, heavy yeah, not not heavy dinner but the dinner with the like good moderate, amount of uh, moderately where it will keep the tummy full and they yeah. feel happy and they can concentrate in the work okay. so you won't feel cranky and you won't you lose the will power as you rightly said you don't lose <laughs> If you don't lose it, you will lose your belly fat, right? <laughs> lose so, it, then you will power, sir. <laughs> so carb <laughs> options, so long, lah. Like, uh, what do you recommend your patients at uh, for that 10, 11 p.m. dinner? See, basically, for South India, na, we hmm. let them have their dosa or know? rice, sir. ஒன்னும் <laughs> notion but right? i always tell them that it's it's carbs at the end of the day uh, but they would love the rice ana the root it paam yaar kaunga the pandranga ne theriyadhu they force themselves to have roti so again there's education that happens there and i tell them that it's okay to have your rice but mm-hmm. because it's going to be your portion you're not going to like eat heaps of rice you're not going to like you know mount your rice and eat mm-hmm. it's just going to be your portion and be mm-hmm. happy with whatever we are um you know suggesting for you so right i think i think they can stick to any of these options um i would ask them to avoid bread or um you know maida in the mari vishayangal where for a lot of individuals it causes bloating mm. uh, during the night so if the konja avoid panna better ena rice will keep them full maida na maida and uh, carb source one the what is the most common thing that they eat at night bread bread, bread. Is the most common mm. yeah bread is the most common thing that people bread and bread with jam ma adu do they bread sandwich just abduvanga sir sandwich. they oh. have like a bread sandwich okay i feel that um, it's not okay to have it in the night especially when you're doing a fast you know oh. a lot of people then the next day come and tell you that you know there is sense of bloating there is a gastric issue mm. ulcer in the mari irukumbodhu tend to avoid you know anything which has gluten and maida mm. most most commonly we tend to avoid it just for the sake that this causes a lot of bloating but if they are absolutely fine then yeah you can go for you know sandwiches that that should also be an easy option 
I think my my suggestion, I think it's going to be a lifestyle change for everybody, and there will be no job for doctors at all if this happens. Listen to this: if mm. the all the Swiggy and Zomato should shut down by six pm. Oh my God! <laughs> I'm telling you, the pandemic, right? <laughs> if Swiggy and Zomato shuts down by six pm, I'm telling you, there will be no job for doctors. <laughs> I'll be no job for doctors, and uh, uh, it's it's a uh, so it's a win-win situation for both of us. Like you know, you charge more, you charge significantly high for your lunch and morning, whatever they want, mm. two times more. But don't do anything for dinner. Ah, this one, I'm not paying the car and ride. But that causes anyway. the serena's vicious cycle. Like you, mm-hmm. you tend because people are earning well right now. People want to spend it on the food that they 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 enjoy. Eat. Uh, yeah because when we were na nam chinna vayasu la irundhom na there was no swiggy there was no zomato yeah. it's something that happened only like you know past yeah. few years back mm-hmm. right so the access to food is much more than what it was earlier appala vandu or cake saapano sweet saapano na diwali time la da we used to eat right uh... so you cannot say that having sweet is wrong sweets were meant to be for a festive yes, you know <laughs> Yeah, so if we want our access to a sweet is much Very more easy. just Very biggest easy. tip. So mm. I think that is the problem. The problem is not the food. The problem is the access to food. access to the food. Finger tip and the fingers are getting bigger. That's the problem. <laughs> <laughs> But anyway, super. Sounds good. So like forty forty five minutes of like wonderful uh, tips and ideas here. Um, anything else to wrap up that I might have missed to asking? Anything. I think I've covered almost okay, everything. Okay, so just that like they need to sit and they need to strategize it properly, properly yeah. and um, and they need to figure out what works for them best, and uh, uh, what works for them best and what is sustainable for them for a long period of time. Yes. If their night shift is going to be say for six more months or for yes. a year, yes, you know. You yes. know, we can't. If you can't change your job, then you need yes. to change your environment, environment that will suit it. Absolutely. So I think these. what we have spoken is just you know completely new and it is completely different from the usual or the previous video that we have done before correct, because correct. all of this information is just fresh and new right uh, yeah. mm-hmm. no, so, so because think, because the, the the situation is peculiar and the situation is different yeah. and i think uh, number one i'm just summarizing all what you said number one you we are starting at a disadvantage when you are at night shift so you need to make a healthy conscious decision and number two a uh, meal timing if you are between 6 pm to 4 am so we talked about this B- three big meals would be 2 pm i'm saying two big meals would be 2 pm and 11 pm and then um three to four intermediate snacks every two to three hours and then varsha gave you all lots of options to discuss about uh, to think about what we can include and the key thing is night time 11 pm don't compromise on your carb it is okay to have rice it is okay to have roti don't don't uh, force yourself not to avo- not to avoid that and key thing is whatever change that you are doing uh, before that the sleep so first focus on your sleep and we talked about all the tips right um and then uh, the last thing is uh, whatever change that you are doing make sure that it is sustainable and you you shouldn't feel that uh, you are forcing yourself because every individual has only like infinite amount of willpower we don't have infinite amount mm-hmm. of willpower so yeah. after like few days it will worn out it will run out of willpower so unless it becomes a, a lifestyle change surrounding your environment um it will not be a long term uh, change um so i think i'm summarized everything for you uh, all so i'm hoping that this will make a big difference and please write down in the comment section regarding um what are the change that you're going to make and then let's see whether you will be able to make it and again varsha has a, a nutrition company as well optimal nutrition and uh, please uh, look her up and uh, we'll love to have you in future shows as well um thank, thank you varsha you, thank you for having thank me thank you thank you sir thank you so much